action. Welcome back to This Is Florida. I'm Nate Riggs and I'm here with Josh Lovely. How are you doing, everybody? We are going to be going over the six steps to home buying today. Nate, how are you feeling? That's right. You know what? I am feeling really good about it. We're excited about this episode. I know we've been uh, just every episode we're putting out is a banger and so it's, it gets harder every week guys so you gotta you know give us a break and we're doing our best to continue to bring you the greatest content from jacksonville beach Florida. we're crushing it and if you're liking and subscribing to this is florida you by now are getting to be an expert at home buying if you're waiting to make a move hey Here's another one to get you get your juices hey. flowing. Let's go. Hey, we're ready when you are. All right, let's dive in. The first thing you got to do, hire your team. Hire your team. This is you're putting your fate into someone else's hands. You need to make sure they know what they are doing, Nate. That's right. He's your man when it comes to negotiating. What you think about that, Nate? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, experience is key. And there's different types of experience, too. There are some people that are like, I've been doing this for 30 years. That doesn't also necessarily mean it's the best because, you know, they might still be using a fax machine and printing out papers and driving across town when they could be using DocuSign. It's 2023. But at the same time, we don't want to go too far the other way where like, hey, I, I just got my license last week and I don't know anything about the business. So you've got to kind of do the research and find somebody with the experience level that you trust and that fits, you know, your needs. So buddies, uncles, cousins, friends, is that a good good person to choose if they've got a license? <laughs> That's a good person if they have skills and experience, but just because they're your buddy or your uncle or your cousin doesn't qualify them to be the team for you. Listen, we talk about this a little bit more in depth. I'm going to post a link below to that video. We spent about three minutes on the topic, but uh, in short, we're just going through the six steps. That's the first one you want to interview and you want to hire the best team. All right, next up, we have got to obtain a pre-approval, Nate. Right, so the first thing you're going to do once you hire your team, part of that process is sitting down and doing a consultation with them. And the consultation, you really find out what your wants and needs are out of the house. But, you know, are those wants and needs going to fit into a million-dollar home or a $200,000 home? That's where Josh comes in. You're going to get in touch with him. You're going to do the application. He's going to hook you up with a pre-approval, and we're going to marry the two, your wants and needs to the pre-approval, right? Absolutely. And this is something that, you know, sometimes people fear, you know, I'm going to pull your credit. I'm going to dig into your finances. And I'm going to make sure, number one, you can make the purchase, you can afford it, and you can qualify. And number two, you're comfortable. Because being comfortable with your monthly mortgage payment is very important. I don't want anybody to be house broke. And I want everybody to understand exactly what they're getting into. Yeah, that's right. Hey, these steps are coming right out of my buyer's guide, by the way. I can get you a free copy of this. All you've got to do is call me or go to natericsofficial.com and there's a buying a house. You click on there, fill it out. We'll get you one of these guides. I'm going to read some bullet points on this pre-approval okay. right out of it here. You know your price range, closing costs, and monthly payments up front. You only look at homes within your price range, so you're not wasting your time or anybody else's time. Your negotiating position with the seller is stronger because you know exactly what you can do. And closing on your new home can happen even more quickly. So if you wait to go out and make your application, then you know, you're starting from zero. Where once you make that application up front, Josh and his team, the underwriters, they're already doing some work behind the scenes. So yeah. as soon as we find a house... Mm -hmm. you're going to be able to turn in that paperwork to the seller and say, hey, listen, I've got the money. We've already started the process. We can close quick. Exactly. And you want to do all this stuff right up front. And that's why it is step two. After you hire us, we are going to get you pre-approved because, hey, if there is something on there that we, if there's a red flag, if there's something we need to correct, we need to identify it right now. If you're shooting for a million dollar home and you can only afford 500,000, we need to identify it right now. The next step is finding the one. So once we plug in your search, we're going to be looking at those houses. You're going to be looking at them online. And listen, the goal here is we don't want to only ask you five questions at the consultation and show you 500 homes. That's a way to get fired or end up in jail, okay, because everybody hates each other at that point. We want to do the opposite. And it's kind of a joke, but in reality, we want to ask you 500 questions to show you five of the best homes. These homes are going to have your must-haves. They're going to have all your needs and wants covered, and they're going to be in your price range. So you're going to be able to pull the trigger at the end of the day. And Nate, this is not on the buyer's guide here, but here's a question I get all the time. I get it whispered to me from some of your clients saying, hey, can Nate show me all the homes or is it just 
It's just uh, someday homes. Ooh, that's good. That's a frequently asked question for sure. Are you going to show me other brokerages' homes, or are you just going to show me your homes? Yes, we will show you all of the homes available in the MLS, on Zillow, on Realtor.com, whatever you're seeing out there, as long as they're active and on the market, we're going to go look at those homes. Yeah. It's not just in-house. Make no mistake. The goal here is to get you a home, not to sell our homes that we have in some book. No way. You are the client. You are all that matters. Who cares if it's Keller Williams house, a someday homes house. It does not matter. We want to get you in your house. That's right. So Josh, we're uh, moving along. We've done our consultation. We've done our homework. We've applied for our mortgage. We found the one. What are we doing next? Ooh, we have got to let them know that that's the house we want. We're going to make an offer. We're going to send them. We're based on, based on Nate's expert opinion. We're going to send them an offer if they're at market and we're going to talk to the lender, make sure that, uh, Hey, if there's concessions we need, because we're in a we're in a time of poor interest rates. So if if me and Nate are talking and I say, listen, man, this guy needs two percent because I need to buy down the rate, that's a language that we can speak behind the scenes and get it done quickly to make sure you're back to step two. Be, make sure you're comfortable and make sure you have a good monthly payment and you're in a good situation. Yeah, that's right. So um, basically, we're gonna sit down. I'm gonna review the neighborhood, see what sold in there recently, what it sold for. We're gonna formulate our you know, offer based on that. If we've got to ask for concessions, just like Josh said, those are closing costs, prepaids. Um, also, we can use those for rate buy downs. That's what we were talking about there. And, you know, we're going to write that offer where I'm going to go through line by line on the contract. It's like 12 pages, but you'll feel comfortable with it by the time we send it over to the sellers. And usually there's some sort of timeline like, hey, are you going to respond in six hours or 48 hours? And kind of that depends on the market. When the market's a little slower, then, you know, we're going to put a timeline like, hey, get back to us in 36 hours. OK, um, when the market's faster, maybe 24. One thing I don't like doing is when agents put a like, I want a response in two hours or this offer is dead. As a, when I'm working with a seller, we have to empathize a little bit, right? We gotta we gotta put ourselves in the seller's shoes. Um, you know, when we're when we put that squeeze on them, they, that might put them off. And here's another thing too: for you, the buyer, five to ten thousand dollars, it might not make that big a difference in your monthly payment. And your purchase power is totally based off of your monthly. Correct, Josh. Absolutely. And this is something that everybody's a unique snowflake. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, every loan program. And that's why your team is going to take care of you. Your team is going to let you know, hey, Nate's going to say, if we go up this much, we need to talk to Josh, see how that affects your payment. And that comes right into this, making your offer, see where you stand. Yeah. Last thing about that offer and what I kind of want to like finalize that point for you to raise your offer like $500, you know, that would change your mortgage payment pennies. And to the seller, it pretty much does nothing. So sometimes people think they're negotiating, they're doing small amounts. You know, you've got to be open mind like, hey, we're making a $300,000 purchase. We've got to work in like five and $10,000 increments to even make it appealing to a seller. Absolutely. Yeah, let's close that one out. Let's get on to the next process. So we've made our offer and our offer has been accepted. It's time to celebrate. But first, my team, I've got transaction coordinators. We've got the title company, Josh and his team and his assistants and underwriters. There's a whole crew, right? We're talking like 10, 15 people. We're going to have an appraiser go out to the, the property. Scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to get appraisals done. We've got our final loan application phase. Then we've got an inspection phase. We're going to hire an inspector to go out there and look at that property. My team guides you through all that. We work with some of the best inspectors in Northeast Florida. Um, um, and they're going to go out, they're going to do infrared scans of the property, see if there's any water damage, anything like that, because we really want to know, you know, is this home a good home for us? Did, you know, we saw it with our eyeballs, but did somebody flip this home and did they cover up a bunch of mold behind the wall? Yeah. And is there anything that, that is going to stop this purchase? Is going to make you, the buyer, say to yourself, you know what, this maybe isn't the home for me. And is there anything that's like, listen, if they fix that, we're good to go. And that's we go right yeah. back into the negotiation and say, hey, you need to fix this. And that goes back again. I'm going to keep referencing back. Your team has timelines and that contract has timelines. And if these repairs aren't negotiated or agreed upon within a certain time frame, they are not going to happen. That's right. You know, you might not have ever heard of things like polybutylene pipes and how that affects you closing on the home or knob and tube, right? We got the historic district in Jacksonville. So we're going to find all kinds of things that today you won't get insurance for. And so 
even on our contract, we sometimes ask for lender required repairs. And that can be kind of a domino thing, Josh, because what happens is the lender is only going to give you the money if the home is insurable, but then insurance won't insure certain things. So the team has to know all these things and they've got to be prepared to negotiate the required repairs on the house. That way you're able to close, um, which I think kind of wraps it up. The sixth step in the process of buying a home is the final review of everything. You're going to get the numbers from the title and you are going to close on that transaction. We're going to be popping champagne at a table that looks a lot like this. There's going to be yeah. a title attorney there. Might There's be, going to be in smile. this room. We're going to be jingling keys. That is my favorite day. That's a reason I'm a loan officer. I love closing day. And the only reason I love closing day is because I, I love seeing people get the keys. It's awesome. I don't care if it's an investment property, first time That's home it. buyer. I love it. It's awesome. That's it. We love seeing people live in homes. We, we own homes ourselves. It's it's a thing that we are just like advocates for, and we want you to do it too yeah. because we are passionate man, about it. We are good at it, and we want to help you get it done too. That's it. So that's six steps the the process for purchasing a home. We hope you enjoyed that. As always, like the video. Be sure to turn on your notifications and subscribe to the channel. Smash that subscribe, son. Smash that subscribe button. All right, we'll see you next time. Make sure you leave a comment. Uh, reach out to Nate. We'll get you this uh, buyer's handbook. A lot of fantastic information in there. See you next time.